wisp of wickedness sounds like a good name for a perfume. He'll find you irresistible when you wear wisp of wickedness. On a distant planet, a wicked creature whose sole purpose was to perform deeds of evil was caught in an explosion of his own making. That happens when you have fried chicken for lunch and don't wash your hands before going back to work. Only the concentrated essence of his imperishable evil survived. A wisp of wicked vapor. Whatever he was doing reduced him to that. And of course, the little blob of bad guy essence drifts through space until it reaches Earth. Where else would it go? Now on a major highway near Metropolis, a motorist removes his hat momentarily to mop his brow. Seconds later, the misty demon transforms him into a destructive monster. He happens to run Clark Kent off the road, and then our reporter notices that the car is headed toward a playground full of children. Not a second to spare. Down. Up you go. Up, up. Yep, our villain today is a hat. Our man has no idea why he was doing what he was doing, but the hat isn't done causing mischief. Well, well, look what the wind blew in. Wonder if it fits. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, inspired by the super evil within the hat, the man swings the powerful electromagnet over the fence, seeking something other than scrap iron to feed to the smelting furnace. This hat must have been made in Bulgaria. It hates kids. Superman flies in and rescues the bus. I don't know why I did it. I wouldn't harm a fly. Superman is slowly grasping that something weird is going on here. If he'd call in Batman to do the detecting, we could get to the bottom of this a lot faster. Now high above the factory floor, the man who controls the giant bucket of molten steel is wearing the hat of evil. Hey, look out! Stop that bucket! Stop it! Get for that! If you want to make a metal statue of Superman, just say so and he'll pose for you. Not so fast, my friend. Just what were you trying to do? I don't know. I swear, I don't know. I couldn't help it. You too? You couldn't help it either? Honest! I'll eat my hat if... Your hat? Wait a minute. This is the same hat the crane operator was wearing, and the motorist who went wild. Great Scott, could it be something about this hat? Maybe that weird thing that just floated out of it? Clark's reporter instincts are kicking in. It's a, a blob of vapor. Evil vapor. Vapor can be condensed or frozen. Now let's see what it does when you put it in a hat. I'm going to say make the hat very uncomfortable to wear. Ow. 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 He throws it into open, cold space where it'll whatever. This one practically screams I'm facing a deadline to get a script in. Still, making a hat the culprit is imaginative if nothing else. Men's hats were on their way out. The new generation of the 60s just quit wearing them. But enough men still wore them that kids wouldn't find it unusual for some guy, especially a bald guy, to be wearing one. Even in the 60s, we knew that exposing all that skin to the sun regularly was a good way to develop all kinds of problems, including skin cancer. So you rarely saw a man with thinning hair outside without one. So having a hat is believable. Having a hat with an evil blob of air in it, not so much. The most unusual part that caught the attention of everyone concerned, none of them had any idea that guy's hat was so aerodynamic. NASA seized it to see if they could develop any ideas from it. As far as I know, they're still working on it.
Hey friends, if you enjoyed the video, please click the thumbs up button and let me and YouTube know it. If you're not subscribed yet, you know what to do. And remember, you can become a patron of this channel for as little as $2 a month. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. He throws it into Copen... Copen? HITCHOO! There's an outtake or two.